Hey guys, so today I'm going to be giving you 10 different horror movie recommendations based on your mood right now. So I wanted to do, instead of my like formal top 10 list that I occasionally do, I was thinking I would do like more casual versions of that where I just give you 10 movie recommendations. They could be random, based on my mood, your mood, whatever. If you wanna submit some requests for specific moods or I don't know, I, I don't wanna say vibes too much in this video, but certain vibes that you want in a movie, you can leave it in the comments, maybe I'll do a part two to this. But I just wanna do some more casual movie recommendations, just ones that maybe I haven't talked about before, or ones I've discovered recently, or ones that are new to me and hopefully new to you. So timestamps will be linked down below depending on your mood, you can jump around in this video, I will have the moods listed down below and 10 movie recommendations to match. Well one movie recommendation per mood. But first, mm. I just wanna thank Semper for sponsoring this video. I genuinely wear perfume every time I film. Even though you can't smell it, it just makes me feel a little bit more ready, a little bit more put together. <laughs> Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service and I'm so excited to be working with them because I absolutely love perfume. I love discovering new and unique scents and I tend to change what perfume I gravitate more towards depending on so many things like the weather, uh, my mood. I also like to get a new perfume at the beginning of a season to really set the tone and Scentbird makes it really easy to discover and shop for new scents. Now you do get a 30-day supply in your Scentbird perfume and I personally change my perfume every single day so these end up lasting me much much longer and as you can see the vials are eight times larger than traditional perfume samples and you get to try out a new designer fragrance every month for just $17 which is fantastic and of course you can skip months without penalty or you can upgrade to two to three cents Per month. There's over 600 designer brands to choose from and these are also really great for traveling so you can always stock up on your favorite perfumes and just have an easier like on the go option. So I will show you the perfumes that I recently picked out and I'm experimenting with currently right now. This first one I believe is Malibu Night by Malibu Nights by Dime Beauty. This has notes of coconut musk, raspberry, and pear. It just smells like the ultimate vacation. Look how cute these little things are too. And then this next one, I will absolutely not be able to pronounce the designer's name, but it's Just Bloom, correct? Just Bloom by Story Ven Venazienne. This has Lily of the Valley and Gardenia, so it's very much your traditional floral scent. And then my top two scents that I have picked out recently, I am obsessed with both of these and been wearing them a ton. This one is Love Me by Two, and this has pink grapefruit, lychee, and peony. I love me a floral scent. Can you tell I picked out pretty much all florals? And then this last one that I sprayed is my absolute favorite that I've smelled recently. This is definitely going to be my fall signature scent. And this is 100% chilled by Eau de Juice. Oh my God, this smells, it smells so good. It has red berries, bergamot, and orange blossom. Perfect for the fall time, let me tell you. You need to go smell this. So make sure you click the link below and use my code HORROR55 to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That is literally only $8. For your first month. I also have exciting news, Scentbird is now available in Canada, so all of my Canadian viewers can also click the link in the description and use my code. Okay, so let's get into the horror movie recommendations. The first category I wanted to do was a new release that you've probably missed and that I haven't really talked about. So this movie came out this year and that is The Curse. I have not seen anyone talk about this. I did see it in theaters when it came out, I think very early on in 2022 if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember what month it was released but I never did a full dedicated review for it. This is set in rural 19th century France and a mysterious possibly supernatural menace threatens a small village. John McBride a pathologist comes to town to investigate the danger and exercise some of his own demons in the process. This movie also is great for fall because of the gothic vibes to this movie. It is gorgeous. I absolutely love the setting and the tone and the gothic atmosphere of this and creature features aren't typically my favorite but this one was really effective for me when I saw it in theaters. I have yet to re-watch it but I definitely will be re-watching it in the fall because it's available on Hulu. I think The Curse was definitely one of those movies that went under the radar in 2022 and a little bit overshadowed by some of the earlier movies we got this year which is kind of a bummer because it was actually a really great movie and highly effective so I definitely wanted to bring more attention to it today. 
today and recommend it if you haven't watched it yet. It's on Hulu, so definitely check it out if you like creature features or gothic atmosphere movies. So the next category was a tricky one, but I was really dedicated to putting this in the video. I don't know why. <laughs> this is Scare Your Pants Off, a movie that's going to scare you. This one was harder because obviously different people are scared of different things so when i would think of a movie that's scary that i haven't talked about in a while or ever uh i would be like mm, people are gonna say that's not a scary movie so what did i have to pick i really tried not to pick this one i really tried <laughs> nothing can top it and if you haven't watched it by now what are you doing and that is gone gm haunted asylum that's right <laughs> the crew of a horror web series travels to an abandoned asylum for a live broadcast it soon encounters much more than expected as it moves deeper inside the nightmarish old building just watch it just watch it by by now you should have seen it i imagine most of you have because i've recommended recommended it so many times give it over an hour because the first 30 minutes drag on so just stick with it it's guaranteed to scare most of you i'm gonna say that because it is the scariest movie that i've personally ever seen including the ring and all of that and if you're scared of the ring you'll kind of like the horror elements that are in Gonchiem as well. But I've talked about it enough. I promise I'm going to give it a rest now and stop talking about it as much, just like I did with Triangle. Could not shut up about that movie for a long time. Now I'm gonna shut up about Gonchiem, but this is my last chance to throw it at you. Go watch it if you wanna be scared. Next category is fun with friends. So this is one that I would recommend watching with either your partner, a friend, a group of friends, something like that in a group setting, I think would be really fun because of the tone of this movie, and that is 13 Sins. A cryptic phone call sets off a dangerous game of risks for Elliot, a down-on-his-luck salesman. The game promises increasing rewards for completing 13 tasks, each more sinister than the last. This movie is just so shocking that I think it's really fun to react to with someone else, which is why I chose it for this category. It does get kind of disturbing, and it really pushes the limits, I think, and it's just such a gradual buildup of tension and horror that you don't even see coming. Of course, Elliot starts with the simplest of tasks of killing a fly and it just escalates from there. And it, you can only imagine the things that this man has to do in this game. If you're a fan of like game, like the, I wanna say the running man, but I don't know if that's a good uh, example. <laughs> but like game type horror movies, maybe like Nerve, I think was another one. Um, something like that, then you would really like 13 Sins. Also, it kind of reminds me of the Black Mirror episode, Shut Up and Dance, if you're familiar with that one. Um, I don't think it gets as disturbing as that episode, but if you're a fan, then I think you would like uh, 13 Sins as well. Next up is a movie that is safe to watch with your family, or if you have kids around, this one would be really fun to show them. It will be kind of, I don't know if it's a controversial choice, but I watched this when I was really young and absolutely fell in love with it. And I've never mentioned it before. And that is Little Shop of Horrors. A nerdy florist played by Rick Moranis finds his chance for success in romance with the help of a giant man-eating plant who demands to be fed. Very standard black comedy type horror movie. If you, I guess it's described as a horror movie. I never really saw it as one, but this is definitely one that I watched really, really young. So maybe that is, it's one of the reasons why I fell in love with the genre because I was obsessed with this plant. <laughs> so I think kids would really like it. It is very dated, of course. It came out in 1986, but I think you should show your kids some movies like that, you know, culture them a little bit. <laughs> or also if you just want like a really fun, more lighthearted movie to watch with the family, Little Shop of Horrors is great. The next recommendation is for if you do not want any gore. I know a lot of you are sensitive to gore. I thought about doing a whole entire like list of 10 movies that don't have any gore in it at all. Um, because some people want to be scared without having to see a lot of gore. So my first instinct was to suggest the others, but I've talked about that a million times. I think it's very well known by now. So I picked one that is very similar to the others. If you're a fan of the others, you would love The Awakening. In 1921, England is overwhelmed by the loss and grief of World War I. Hoax exposer Florence Cathcart visits a boarding school to explain sightings of a child ghost. Everything she believes unravels as the missing begin to show themselves. This stars Rebecca Hall, which as you know by now is one of my favorite actors of all time. She's an instant watch for me. I love The Awakening. It's definitely more of a drama 
thriller, I would say, than true horror, but there are some visuals in it that are really great. It's very reminiscent of the others. There's a little bit of romance in there, but overall, I just really love the story of The Awakening and the atmosphere. Let me tell you, it is stunning. Great one for fall as well. It's very like moody. And I mean the building, it's Engl old England, so it's stunning. So you wanna be grossed out? That's what you want. You want to be a little nauseous, sick to your stomach. You just, you know, want to look away from the screen, but you can't because it's like a car accident. You just can't look away. Then you need to watch the platform. This is one that I have reviewed in the past. I've talked about many times, but it's been a while. It came out in 2019. So it's been a decent amount of time and I have to bring it up again because it is just so incredible. A vertical prison with one cell per level, two people per cell, only one food platform and two minutes per day to feed an endless nightmare trapped in the hole. This is a Spanish film. It is a Netflix movie. So I believe it was a Netflix original, still on Netflix. So if you have not seen it yet, definitely go watch it. It's the perfect one for a gross out though, because it's not gross out in the sense of like, bodily, I mean, there is some bodily stuff going on, some gore here and there, but nothing too extreme. It's really the people and the disgusting behavior and the food. So if you're sensitive to like, mouth noises, chewing, food sounds, people eating, disgusting, that kind of stuff, then this is the one. Or maybe it's not the one, if you're like really sensitive, you know? If you have misophonia or anything like that, maybe skip it, <laughs> unless you wanna push your limits a little bit. A runner up for gross out movie though, I will say is Cabin Fever 2 Spring Fever. That one will definitely get you, or The Bay, which is a found footage movie. So there you go, you got three recommendations in one. If you wanna feel disgusting, nasty, visuals, either bodily or food or otherwise. Next category, you wanna feel something. You wanna feel some things. You want something psychological, something that's gonna get to you in a weird way that messes with your mind maybe a little bit. Then you should watch Swallow. Hunter, a newly pregnant housewife, finds herself increasingly compelled to consume dangerous objects. As her husband and his family tighten their control over her life, she must confront the dark secret behind her new obsession. I think this movie is fantastic. It stars Haley Bennett in it, which I love. Um, she does an amazing job in this. And this is disturbing in such a psychological way. And there's so much story to it that is so good. It's definitely going to make you feel some things. It's actually going to make you feel a wide range of things because she's eating things while pregnant. I'm pregnant right now, obviously, so it's definitely a little bit bothersome, but it kind of delves into the concept of trauma and she develops this eating habit as a result of her trauma and her feeling confined to this family, to her husband, to her, this house, and just the feeling of being trapped and having no control over her life. So she controls the only thing that she can and that is what she puts in her body. And of course, there is so much more to the story that is highly emotional. So maybe look up trigger warnings here and there just for mentions of things. Never gets like too, too graphic or anything, but definitely an incredible psychological horror movie. If you need a break from that, a little too heavy, you need a little lightheartedness, you need some goofiness, some cheesy, weird horror, then watch Mirrors from 2008. In a bid to pull a shattered life back together, troubled ex-cop Ben Carson takes a job at a, as a security guard at the burned ruins of a once prosperous department store. As Ben patrols the charred hallways, he begins to see horrifying images in the ornate mirror, mirrors that still adorn the walls. Cheesy, greatness, I love it. Uh, it took me so long to watch this. I actually own both Mirrors and the sequel on DVD, and I've yet to watch the sequel, so I think I'll definitely be checking that out in the fall. It's the pinnacle of that era, though, of 2008. It just feels very of the times, so if you're a fan of 2010 or before, you know, early 2000s, uh, mid-2000s, then this is the one for you. Now, it is, you know, visually has some disturbing elements and some gore and things like that, but I think it is definitely more on the lighthearted side. It's not like a dark comedy, by any means, but it's just a cheesy movie that's going to be exciting to watch and super entertaining. You know, I don't really talk about disturbing movies too often, but I do have a recommendation for you that hopefully you haven't seen yet, but I, it's a pretty common disturbing horror movie. But if you want something that's a little messed up, that is highly disturbing, 
then watch Eden Lake. During a romantic weekend getaway, a young couple confronts a gang of youths and suffers brutal consequences. This is another movie that came out in 2008, and this one definitely very different from Mirrors. This is a heavy, heavy watch. Definitely know that you're in for some emotional roller coaster stressed out, disturbing stuff going on. I really like this movie, but it is one of those that I can't watch that often. I think I've only seen it the one time. I actually I think I've seen it twice. I've done a rewatch of it and it's very hard to watch. So please keep that in mind. Although I am sensitive to disturbing content, if you like home invasion movies or things like Last House on the Left, realistic type horror that's really gonna get to you, um, that this is gonna be the one for you, but you are warned that it has some disturbing content and it is just overall heavy, just a heavy movie. So the last category, a movie I wanna recommend, you know I love me some mind-bending movie recommendations. If you're a fan of Triangle or Coherence, then you should watch Time Crimes. A man accidentally gets into a time machine and travels back in time nearly an hour, finding himself will be the first of a series of disasters of unforeseeable consequences. This is another Spanish movie, and this is actually the first movie that Ryan ever showed me in our relationship, and I was sold. I was ready for marriage right then. <laughs> anyway, Time Crimes is incredible. It's one of those time, as, you, as the title, suggests uh, time bending, time traveling type movies. And it is more of like an action drama thriller, I would say, than like true horror, but there are definitely horror elements. Overall, Time Crimes is just a super underrated movie. You don't know what's going to happen next. It's not predictable at all. And I never hear anyone talk about it. It is from 2007, but it doesn't feel dated or anything like that, although I might be biased because I love that era as well. So take that with a grain of salt anyway. But if you want mind bending, this is the one for you. Also, I recommend Fractured. I've talked about it in the past. It's not really a horror movie. Again, it's like a psychological thriller, but that movie is definitely mind bending. So I also recommend that, but some people hate that movie for some reason. <laughs> Again, kind of heavy, heavy of a movie, um, but Fractured is incredible as well. So there you are. You have even more than 10 movie recommendations in there because I slipped in some honorable mentions. Um, let me know what your favorite category category was in this video and if you want any more recommendations please leave a mood or you know a vibe that you want a movie to fit and I will try to think of a movie recommendation for you. This is not by any means an original idea. I'm pretty sure I've seen Emma do this over a spooky astronaut that is over on her Instagram so definitely not an original idea but it's a way for me to get in some extra movie recommendations as if you were like a friend coming to me with a movie or like you wanted a movie recommendation from me. And maybe I don't have 10 horror movies to put in a top 10 list or anything to fit these like very niche categories. And it's just a way for me to get in some extra movie recommendations for you guys. Let me know if you have any other suggestions for any of these categories or any other categories you can think of in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you soon. Bye.